part 28 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss customizing the auto-generated edit view. Please watch part 27 before proceeding with this video. If you recollect from part 25, this edit view is auto-generated for us. Let's navigate to this edit view. At the moment, there are several issues with this edit view. First of all, let's replace this gender text box control with a drop-down list control. We discussed doing exactly the same thing in the previous session as well. So at the moment, if you look at this edit view, this is the line which is actually rendering the text box control for uh, gender. Notice that we are using editor for HTML helper. That needs to be replaced with the drop-down list HTML helper. To speed things up, I have this already implemented. So let's copy and paste this right here. And then let's format this properly. And there is another issue with this edit view. You know, basically within this department drop-down list, I want select department as the first item within that list. And we have discussed doing a similar thing in the previous session as well. So let's replace this empty string with select department. Now notice that at the moment, we are able to change the name of the employee. Let's say our business requirements are such that once an employee is created, we don't want to allow the users to change the name of the employee. So obviously here we are rendering a text box control, so the user will be able to change it. So let's not render a text box control. So if you look at this edit view at the moment, we are actually using this editor for HTML helper, which is rendering the text box control for name. So instead of using editor for, I'm going to use display for HTML helper. And while we are here, let's also change the font family to Arial. Let's use a div tag and set the style attribute. OK, let's go ahead and run this with all these changes and let's navigate to edit view. Okay, notice that we have a drop-down list for gender and within the department drop-down list we have select department as the first list item. And notice that name is rendered without a text box control. But then when I click save, we're gonna have an issue. Look at that, it says the name field is required. Why is that? Because you know the name value is just displayed on the form. Okay, so when I click save, you know it's not retaining that value. So to retain that value, let's use a hidden field. Just like how we are using a hidden field to store employee ID, let's use a hidden field to store the name of the employee. So I'm going to use hidden for HTML helper to achieve that. Okay, let's run this once again. And let's navigate to edit view and let's click on save button. Notice that now I don't get that error. Okay, so here we have made the name field read only, but then it's possible to use tools like Fiddler, change name property, generate a post request, and then submit it to the server. Because of the way we have implemented edit action within this employee controller, look at that, this is the edit action method which is going to respond to the post operation and notice that we have an employee object coming into this method as a parameter so obviously this employee object is going to receive those posted form values the default ASP.NET MVC model binder is going to harvest all those posted form values and then populate these uh, this employee object with those values now so obviously with tools like Fiddler when we post a value for name uh, property, uh, then the default model binder will simply take that and stick into this employee object, which is then saved to the database. So obviously, we'll be able to still change the name of the employee. And we discussed doing uh, exactly the same thing in part 19 of this video series. So if you want to know how to use Fiddler and generate a post request, please watch part 19. And to prevent that from happening, there are several ways, and we discussed that as well. We have discussed using update model function and pass, you know, include and exclude list as a parameter. Uh, we discussed that in part 20, and in part 21, we discussed using bind attribute, and in part 22, we discussed using interfaces to achieve exactly the same thing. 
In this video, we'll discuss using bind attribute. Along the way, I want to demonstrate adding model validation errors dynamically. So I'm going to make a few changes to our edit controller action method. First of all, you know, I'm going to exclude name property from default model binding. So I can use bind attribute for that. So let's go ahead and use the bind attribute and specify our exclude list. So I'm going to use the other overload where we can specify the exclude list. And then I'm going to exclude the name property. Okay, so since we exclude name property, you know, the name property of the employee object will be null. Okay, but then if you look at the employee class that we have implemented, you know, we have set name property is required. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to retrieve the name property from the database and then set that to this employee object. So we'll have the existing name of the employee as it is now within the database. And also, look at that, if we don't set the name property of the employee object on this object, when we hand this over to save, to be saved in the database, you know, employee name will be null, and then we will update name of the employee with null. But we want to retain the existing name of the employee, so we need to set the employee object with that property. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to load the employee and let's call this employee from DB. So we are going to get the employee object from the DB database. And to do that, we already have this database const context object. So let's use that object. And it has got employees property, which is going to list all the employees. Out of that, we want a single employee where the employee ID must be equal to the employee ID within the object that's coming into this method as a parameter. So this is the employee that we are changing. Okay, so we have, you know, employee from the database. Okay, so we can use that object now. So just to speed things up, let me copy paste this code and it's very straightforward. All we are doing here is, you know, we are copying the properties from this employee object into this object, employee from DB object. So we are setting the employee ID, gender, city, and department ID. Okay, now we don't have to really set the employee ID because we are retrieving the employee from the database using the employee ID. So we can safely get rid of that line. And then we're going to pass this employee object to be saved into the database. Now we can get rid of this line as well because within the DB context we already have this employee object. So we can safely get rid of this line. And then we are changing that, you know, um, we, are, we are passing it uh, to this method where we set the state as modified and then we save the changes and finally redirect to the index action. Okay, so with these changes let's actually run this and see what's going to happen. So it's taking a while to run. So let's click on edit. Let's click on save and see what's going to happen. Look at that. It still says the name field is required. Okay. And look at what happens to the name. It's gone. Why is that? Because if you notice what we are doing here, we have retrieved this employee. I mean, we have this object. The default ASP.NET MVC model binder is going to exclude the name property from model binding. So on this object, name property will be null. And what we are doing here, uh, we are retrieving, you know, using the ID from this object. We are retrieving the existing employee details from the database and storing in this object. And then we are copying gender city department ID to this employee from DB object. But keep in mind, name property is marked as a is marked with required attribute, meaning that property is required. So by the time the control gets to this line, it checks model state dot is valid. Within this object, name is null. So this property is going to return false. 
in which case this piece of code will not be executed it will return the view passing this employee object and this employee object we have name property as null that's why name is becoming null if there is any validation error okay so to retain that name you know if there are validation errors what we need to do is we need to set the name property the existing name of the employee from the database so I'm going to set name property on the employee object by retrieving the value from this employee from DB object okay so with these changes let's run this once again and see you know if it's going to retain name if there are model validation errors so let's click on edit click save now look at this the good thing is it's retaining the name but then it still shows this error the name field is required why is that that's basically because you marked you know this property with required attribute so let me get rid of that required attribute there and then let's run this once again so let's click on edit let's click save notice that now I'm able to post the form and then because of the way we have implemented this edit controller action method now it's not possible for end users to use tools like fiddler change name property uh, within a post request and then submit that to the server okay because we are specifically excluding the name property from binding now is it required actually to use this bind attribute here not necessarily still the application is going to work as expected even if we don't use this bind attribute you know users will not be able to change the name property by uh, you know posting a request using fiddler that's because look at what we are doing we are not using this employee object to save the employee details to the database instead we are using this employee from DB object which we have retrieved from the database and if you look at this object we are only populating the fields that we need gender city department ID and we we already have the employee ID but not the depart uh, you know the name of the employee okay that's why even without this bind attribute it's gonna work okay but then since I want to demonstrate adding model validation errors dynamically let's leave that bind attribute there for the time being okay so obviously at the moment we can change the details of the employee so I'm changing the gender to female from London to London 1 and department to HR let's save that and see if the changes are persisted look at that this, the, all these changes are saved to the database okay now alright so we fixed the issue with edit view so we made name field read only and then you know it's working as expected but then look at this at the moment you know within this employee class we removed that required attribute okay so now employee name is no longer required so obviously this is going to be a problem for the create view so if I get to create view I don't enter name I only enter name and maybe city and then a department and then click create look at that I'm able to create an employee without the name okay and why is how is that possible because we remove that required attribute okay so now in order to correct this we can add validation errors dynamically okay so within create controller action method of this employee controller so this is the create controller action method which responds to HTTP post operation so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the name of the employee object if that is empty then we can dynamically add so I'm going to use string dot is null or empty and then we are, we are going to check the name of the employee so if the name property of the employee object that is coming into this function uh, is null or empty then we want to add a model validation error so to the model state object you know look at this I'm invoking this add model error function on this model state object and we are saying you know this name field is required that's the property for which we are adding a validation error and this is the error message that we want so for name property you know if it's null or empty show this error message so let's go ahead and run this with these changes let's click edit 
Now this edit view works as expected, but then if we go to the create view, look at that, the name field is required unless and until we provide a value for the name, uh, we are not will not be able to save the changes to the database. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.